anyway, uh, thank you very much, and uh, I would like uh, to uh, thank you for your kind invitation. And uh, I would like to recognize, of course, all of the members, of the directors of the of the cooperative, and. I would like to thank you for your kind invitation to talk a little bit about what we do in what are the latest developments in the cooperative movement in the country. Um, I, I don't know if you read it in my, but I am the vice chairman of the committee on cooperatives here uh, in the Senate. And I have been conducting many of the hearings of uh, all of the problems that cooperatives face. Primarily, one that I think, how big is the cooperative now in terms of retained earnings? That's a 5 billion. Okay, na pagbuti ng 10 billion para tax exempt pa rin kayo. That is the main problem. And the reason I say that, because the reason, the problem that we have, the biggest problem that we have is BIR. Up to now, I do not know if you have the same experience as the other cooperatives around the country have been experiencing. Where, although in the cooperative code, it clearly states in the law that cooperatives under 10 million retained earnings are tax exempt. So long as the operations of the cooperatives are to the members, what you, if you have operations that involve non-members, that's taxable. But if you are doing operations only to your members, dapat yan, dapat yan tax exempt. Ang problema, ang interpretation ng BIR na kanilang ginagawa, what the BIR, the way they interpret it, is that instead of taking it, taking at face value what is in the law, the tax exempt status of the of cooperatives, instead of taking it that way, what, they call, what the BIR now says is prove to the BIR that you are tax exempt. And how do they do that? They say, they, you have to provide all the documentation, you have to find, you have to have the entire, uh, the entire mem a list of membership, including their addresses, you have to find, you have to have a general assembly, you have to go back and forth sa ating BIR to convince them that they are tax exempt. We have been arguing about this with Kim and Ares. We have been almost fighting with her about this. And even the regional tax, uh, the, the B, regional BIR of officers. Because I keep telling them, I keep telling them, the law is very clear and you are in violation of the law. And they always tell me, yes, it's okay, we agree. But then, after they tell me that, on all the assurances that they give me, the next thing that they do is they again go back to the cooperatives and they say that uh, you have to prove that your tax exempt status. What we are proposing is a much simpler system. What we are proposing is that as long as you are an accredited cooperative, accredited by the Cooperative Development Authority, then that is sufficient to provide you with tax exempt status. Ang dinalata de Bihan, we are in the middle of rewriting the, the charter of the CDA. Uh, that the, the charter of the CDA is the, is, the, is the document that defines the functions, the powers of the cooperative development authority. That, I know, this is exactly the, this is where we feel, and if you go down, what we are proposing is that a, a cooperative will be formed. And once a cooperative is formed, that you have conducted all the proper trainings, that you have conducted all, all the necessary uh, uh, requirements, such as, as I said, training, the documentation. And you bring all of that to the CDA. The CDA will give you an accreditation. Now, once you are holding that accreditation as a, as a recognized uh, functioning and operational cooperative, then you will be able to claim tax exempt status. Well, other added documentation, no requirement to show to go to the BIR, no requirement to prove anything in your tax exempt status, but uh, simply to be able to show that you have the uh, that you have the uh, accreditation from the CDA that will be enough. 
hopefully uh, the next administration will be more sympathetic to the cooperative, uh, the cooperative movement. The reason that I myself have been happy all cooperatives duly registered to the authority shall present their certificate of registration. You just see the article accreditation. Now, to the nearest BIR office, the latter shall within 10 days issue the certificate of tax exemption. Ito na pagahirap ng mga UCTE. Dati yan ang nirekalo ng lahat ng ating mga kooperatiba. Ay mo po kung kayo ay kung ano-anong hinihingin documentation sa inyo. Pag nainagay natin, pag naging patas na ito, hindi na kailangan yun. At magiging mas simple ang magiging buhay nyo. The other parts of the, the other parts of the amendments, the other amendments that we have had, is to strengthen the training program so that mas maraming personnel conducting the training program at saka mas maraming hindi na tayo kailangan bumiyahin ng napakalaki hindi nyo kailangan magbayad ng napakalaki uh, because the CDA, the problem that the CDA has had, the problem that the CDA has had has been because the CDA does not have enough people, does not have enough Stop trainers. It. So what we have done, which is already being done now, but we will strengthen the system, we are going to include schools and universities so that you can go to the nearest university, as you see, you can go to the nearest school and that, that trainings will be conducted there. So you do not have to go very far, number one, and secondly, it will be cheaper. And I think that is something that uh, uh, that many cooperatives have been complaining about. You might, uh, although I am the vice chairman of the committee on cooperatives, I have been the one uh, conducting most of the most of the hearings because I have tried to be very active in try in, in fostering and in encouraging the cooperative cooperative movement uh, in the Philippines. Why is that? It comes from the experience that I gained when I was governor, and I remember, uh, I remember when I was when I was governor, we had to institute a thorough and wide-ranging agricultural policy. And uh, the, the, the first, before I go to get to that, before that I became congressman in 1992, and when I was going around my district. In 1992, uh, I was uh, inspecting some of the schools at uh, the what we could do to help our teachers. And I noticed, and I'm sure you also know this, that when you go to the school, the teachers are not teaching. They are selling things to the students. They are selling to the school. Uh, because I really believe that they are our partners in development. They are the ones who are molding the future of the country. They are very important. And teachers, I, have, uh, I, I always say teachers do not have a profession. They do not have a job. They have a vocation. And it is a vocation because they feel they need to play this part in society. And so I asked my teachers, I said, why are you doing this? Why is it that you are, instead of teaching the, uh, that the children, you are uh, selling uh, all kinds of things? And they said, because plugging the lane to So, we were going to pay for 5-6. When we were going to pay for 5-6, we didn't have to pay for 5-6. We didn't have to pay for 5-6 if we didn't have to pay for 5-6. So that the, 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 the idea came to my head. I said, let us make cooperatives for them. And so what I did, well, I married the town that we do, the CDF, Countryside Development Fund, and it's a big deal. It's a big deal. But the CDF, I took my CDF, the 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 CDF, nagsimula sa savings and loan. Uh, and then, uh, ang pa maganda, madaling tuluan yung teacher kung paano magpatakbo ng cooperative. And we were able to see that naging, we were able to help the teachers who were not getting their salary in time. And they were not having to borrow in the 5-6, they borrow from the cooperative. 
and the cooperative will give them very small uh, interest rate. And that way, although the cooperative makes a little money just to be able to continue to function, what's more important is that they will be able to function. And again, this came to me because of my experience, I do, I, I studied in England. And in the UK, 50% of all groceries sold in all of the grocery stores are sold by the cooperative. Ganun na ang cooperative And I saw the success. And I saw that the cooperative is the best way to give ordinary people, ordinary citizens, a, a, a way to make themselves better, to pull themselves out of where they are. And now to go back to my original story, that I am, when I became governor, I have to develop the agriculture of the story. And I said, what do we have to do? We have to get to meet the, our farmers to plan in a certain way. We have to teach them the new technologies. We have to develop seedling uh, supply. Now, there are many aspects of it that we have to do. And I say, how do we do it? It is a and the idea came to my head and I said, let us use the cooperative. So I immediately uh, uh, called the CDA and I asked the CDA, Ina pa ang nakalista na kooperativa, na agricultural cooperative dito sa ilang kustote, nakalista sa inyo sa CDA. And they said, 6,000. So they did not put 60. And when we looked at their financial viability, the ones that were actually functioning were six. So before, out of 6,000, not put us a six. But so before I could institute my agricultural policy, I had to build up a cooperative. And with that, what I'm going to do is we, we, had, we, put, we put aside seed money, 50000 or less, for each cooperative. The cooperatives would come, would apply to us, and we would uh, look at them, we would assess. Kung ano yung pangangailangan nila, would 50000 be enough? Would it be what? Or is 50000 too much, depending on what they want to do, how many members they have? All of those things were something that we what that one we did. And because of that, we conducted training also. Because it turns out, ang uh, lumalabas, ang magsasaka, hindi mo kailangan doon na wag magsaka. Farmers do not need to be taught how to farm. But if they're going to form a cooperative, you have to teach them how to bookkeeping, management, credit rating, things like that. And uh, so nagpapautan kami sa mga cooperative at 3%. Ito na. Pagdating ng eleksyon, Tapit na sa atin yung mga cooperative. Go! Ang galing mo na yung 3%. Tapit na mga maliit lang naman ang pinikita ninyo. Sabi ko, hindi ako hindi, hindi kami pumikita sa 3%. Kailangan yung may intihan. Dahil kung nagpabayad kayo sa utang kayo ng 3%, may record yan. Yung record na yan, yan ang magiging credit rating ninyo. Kung, kung regular kayo nagpabayad at maganda ang pagbayad ninyo, Pwede niyo ngayon dalihin yung credit rating na yan sa banko. At sasabihin niyo sa banko, maganda ang performance namin sa pagbayad ng utang. And so, mag-uutang kami and they will have confidence in that. So all of these little things that we are putting together, dahan-dahan, we were able to see that the different elements of our agricultural policy came together. And I, besides the agri, besides the agri, on the agri se agricultural sector, we put together cooperatives also. And I am so happy to say, number one, the teachers cooperatives in 1991 and 1992, when the Congress was not successful. And the management style, the business plan. The other cooperative, the Pinalaki, the Pinalaki, and the other people. There are many people na imbis na palakihin yung kooperatiba ay ang kanilang ginawa ay maraming servisyo sa member. So hindi yung mayaman ng kooperatiba pero ang daming servisyo sa member. So there's, that's, that's dependent on the management ng ano, ano yung business plan. 
Pero at least meron na silang business plan. Kasi tinuruan namin kung paano kumuha ng business plan. So that is, that is why I am so involved. As you can see, I'm very animated when I talk about uh, cooperative. Because I really, really am very frustrated that in the past few years, that parang hindi kinikilala ang mga kooperatiba at hindi nalalaman ng ating pamahalaan. Uh, yung yung tax exemption is the perfect example. Na hindi nila naiintindihan kung ano ang halaga at ano ang maganda, ang daming magagawa na maganda ang cooperative po. Kaya kahit meron tayong mga problema ng ito, kahit hindi tayo minsan naiintindihan, kahit uh, yung cooperative movement hindi na susuportahan ng gano, we have to continue with the cooperative movement. It is the only way. It is the only way that we give our ordinary citizens a economic opportunity to make more, to make something. Hindi na naman pera ito eh. But we are talking about what to put together an organization to protect the members, number one. To provide services to the members. And in that way, to make the lives of the members better. And that way, natin tumuan na rin. You can talk about cooperatives as being a small or medium enterprise. Kasi ang ilan lang naman ang cooperative, I think the biggest cooperative is in Cebu. Ang kanilang retainer is 10 billion. Ako, 10 billion ang pera. Wala na yung tax exemption nila. Para na sila kukulas mo. But, around the country, there are many successful cooperatives. And it is just a question of support from the government. So, yan ang, that, is, that is what I have, been, I have been sponsoring. That is what I have been telling everyone that we should do. And I believe that do not, that despite the problems that we are facing, that the cooperative movement still does a lot of good for our people, still makes many opportunities for our people. So I would uh, just continue to encourage you. What you are doing is very important work. What you are doing is helping yourselves, your members, helping the, the businesses that you are in, and in that way you are helping the local economy. Yeah, I just rest assured that uh, uh, no matter where I end up, no matter where I am in government, uh, the cooperative movement is very close to my heart. And that we will always have a supporter. You will always have a supporter. You will always have a defender. You will always have an advocate. You will always have a, a mouthpiece to talk about this uh, in any part of the the continuing life of our cooperative movement. And if there is any way that I can assist, please make sure that you get in touch with me and we will do what we can. Sa Senado, na Barangay Retirement Benefits Bill. Benefits Bill. Napakasimple lang. At sabi namin, itong ka-cover na ito, kagalan nilang cooperative, ang dami ko naman ito ng cover na ito. At sinasabi ko lagi sa mga kasapang sa national government, kung lahat, lahat ng ginagawa ninyo dito sa national government, kung wala ang mga barangay official, kung wala ang mga barangay politics, wala ang mararamdaman ng tao. So, ang nakikita ko sa barangay, sa barangay ng mga workers, ay dahil, dahil hindi tumatanggap at kahit yung barangay officials, hindi ito matanggap na you do not receive a salary. Yeah. You only get honorario. Yeah. Yeah. Yung medyo mabait yung uh, chief executive. At kaya uh, uh, sabi namin, eh, marami tayong pinapagawa sa kanila. We are asking them to do so many things. So, pinupon namin itong barangay ng benefits. Bago ng higay, retirement benefits. Barangay retirement benefits is very simple. Is that about retirement? Upon retirement, after four at least, uh, for the uh, elected officials at least three terms, but including also, not only the, the elected officials, but also including the barangay health workers, daycare workers, the local people, 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 the Yung 60% ng national, kukuha kami ng 1%. Uh, more or less 5.3 billion. And with that 5.3 billion, magbabayad tayo more or less 
for the Barangay Chairman, starting the highest is 100,000 retirement benefit. Hanggang sa workers, na 50,000. Kailangan pa natin, kailangan pa natin ikulak para pirmahan. I would suggest that you uh, express your support for the Barangay, so that you know, Barangay Retirement Benefits Bill. Ako author. And to put so you, you make sure your liga, the liga of the Barangay, is acting in endorsing it and in pursuing it. Malaki po, especially, atin atin na lang, since tayo tayo lang naman dito, tayo tayo lang naman dito, malapit tayo sa eleksyon, maraming hihingin sa inyo yung mga kandidato, hihingin ninyo yung Barangay Benefits Bill. Yeah!